Ever since I first saw it on a tour of the Freedom Trail, I've always considered the old State House to be the center of historic Boston. And indeed, in historical Boston, it would have been an immensely important site. This building was the seat of colonial government before the war, and it was from this balcony that that most unfortunate of documents, the Declaration of Independence, was first read to the people of Boston. But this iconic building is also beset with an infamy, as it was at this very spot, underneath that balcony's looming gaze, that violence would erupt as British regulars opened fire on a civilian crowd in the Boston Massacre. Or was it? When one walks down what was once called King Street, now State Street, to approach the old State House, one is met with a most breathtaking sight. As skyscrapers rise around the quaint little building, and cars race around it in a whirlwind of modernity, you'd assume that it's an easy thing to miss, and yet, it's almost impossible to lose sight of the structure with its firm red bricks and wise, aged facade. It makes sense that this ground would be so remarkable when compared to what lies around it as, at least for the American Revolutionary cause, this is hallowed ground. Immediately before the famous balcony lies a marker, which reads simply on the ground, Site of the Boston Massacre, March 5th, 1770. And within the circle, bricks lead clearly to the center, where a single, simple star must assuredly mark the very ground where a new nation was born in blood. Except, there's one little problem with that. This wasn't the site of the Boston Massacre. Indeed, this is actually nowhere near the actual site of the engagement, if you want to call it such a thing. Much like those more romantic portrayals of that night, such as I've portrayed it thus far, this marker is not just wrong or a little bit off, but it's a complete lie. Just as the night of March 5th, 1770 was not a night where innocent patriots were brazenly mowed down by tyrannical government troops, but an occasion where a drunken and riotous crowd of political extremists harassed and assaulted lawfully posted soldiers who then panicked, the actual location of that unfortunate event was in reality well and clear across the street from this commemorative marker. And as we look from the perspective of the old State House's balcony, you can see immediately under the building the same marker, and if you look up across the street, you'll see what is now a Bank of America, but what used to be the site of the old Custom House. This was the real site of the Boston Massacre. Unmarked, uncommemorated, and largely forgotten to everyone but the tour guides. Though, actually, as you can see by this diagram, the precise spot of the Custom House used to actually be far higher up the road than the modern bank building is. So, even worse, this would have placed the actual site of the event, well, under the corner of State and Congress Street, with the bodies of those men having been killed scattered across the same location. Now, when I first saw the old State House, knowing what had happened there, when I first approached it in the long, straight walk down State Street with its dark red bricks staring me down. And indeed, when I first saw that clear and blatant marker on the ground marking the very spot, supposedly, where the events had took place, I had assumed, as I feel nearly everyone who's unaware of the truth would also, that the soldiers who had committed the act were lined up before the building. I could almost see the angry mob storming down the former King Street, shouting obscenity and cruelties from far away, descending upon the sentries at their post under the governor's meeting place. I could imagine so vividly those nervous soldiers clutching with half-frozen fingers at their muskets as their quickened breaths made clouds before their faces, as they saw that there was no place to run, their backs literally to the wall of their superiors, the eyes of that lion and unicorn above staring down at their defenders expectedly. And I could envision the soldiers firing down that long, unbroken corridor like it was some defensive fortification as those same civilians ran as quickly as they could down it, desperate to find some escape from the fire. That is the image which the architecture of this place draws to one's mind. 
and while a sign posted quite literally across the street from the building does point out that the events actually took place elsewhere, I can't imagine that most people ever even see, let alone bother to read, that sign. And so they walk away, as I first had, with that image echoing through their minds, not the reality of the actual event. The precise location of memorials and markers, and the way that they are designed in relation to the spaces around them, matters immensely. And when something so significant as an individual paving stone claiming to mark the precise location of an immensely important historical event is blatantly wrong, well, it can lead to a great many misconceptions, sometimes even dangerous ones, about the nature of those past events. Indeed, it's almost enough to remind one of those early pieces of propaganda which portrayed the Boston Massacre. Though while there never was a butcher's hall above the Custom House, at least Revere, that master of subtlety, got the perspective of the whole thing more or less correct. But sadly, I can't imagine that the city of Boston will be tearing up State Street anytime soon to place a proper commemorative marker where the events really took place, and something tells me that the Bank of America would hardly be uh, welcoming of a centuries box and post placed outside for recreations of the event. For now, we shall simply have to continue across the street. And I think that it's all rather a shame, because when we look to remember that incredibly significant event, that night which had caused so much unnecessary suffering, we're actually looking to the wrong place. Until the next time, my dear viewer, I am and I shall remain your most humble and obedient of servants.